So today we're going to go over the last thing in the chemistry unit, and that is the mole. All right, and we don't mean the little burrowing rodents. Okay, the mole in chemistry is a unit that we use to um, communicate the amount of something. Okay, there's lots of ways to communicate the amount of something. We could use grams. Okay, we could use mass and tell people how many how many grams of something there is. We could use volume and tell people how much space it takes up. Okay, but sometimes when we're talking about like chemical reactions and things like that, we need to be a little more accurate in terms of how many particles of things were involved in a reaction. Okay, that's where the mole comes in. The mole is a unit that we can use that always represents the same number of particles, regardless of what element or compound we are talking about. Okay, so in that way, it's like a dozen. Okay, it doesn't matter whether I say a dozen eggs or a dozen donuts, a dozen people, I always mean how many? 12. Okay, well, when I say I have a mole of water, I mean I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water. Okay, if I say I have one mole of um, sodium, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of sodium. Okay, it always rep represents the same amount. Now you're probably thinking, what a ridiculous number to pick, but there's a reason behind it, okay, which we'll get into here in a little bit. All right, so the mole is a unit for measuring number of particles or represents a number of particles, okay? We're gonna look at the relationship between moles, mass, and molar mass, okay? And use the mole equation to solve problems. The mole equation looks like this. N equals little m over big M. Chemists are strange people. There are 26 letters in the English language and they used M in a three variable formula twice. Don't ask me why. And the only other letter they used is the one that sounds like M. I don't know why, chemists are weird. Okay, so uh, the way this works is uh, N stands for the number of moles, okay? And that equals the mass in grams divided by the molar mass in grams per mole, okay? And we'll talk about all that stuff when we get into it, but that's what that formula means, okay? We're also going to look at how we properly do algebra, and that is how we properly manipulate that formula, because we will not use a triangle, because that's stupid. And I know you've been taught that, and that's unfortunate because it's stupid. Okay, algebra is not that hard, and I'm going to teach you how to do it properly, like you should have been before. Okay, so my rant's semi over. I'll rant again when we get back to it. Okay, all right. So let's look at what the mole is. Okay, so we can, like we said, we can express the amount of something in grams or liters or moles. Okay, um, but we can't possibly count the number of particles in any sample that we have of something, okay? If I've got, you know, a pile of salt in front of me, I cannot start going in there with a pair of tweezers and going one atom, two atoms, three atoms, okay? I, I can't, first off, I can't see them. Secondly, there's no way I'd be able to pick them up, okay? And in even an incredibly small pile of sodium, I could count my entire life and not finish counting the number of atoms that would be in an, even a very, very small pile of salt, okay? They're just that small, right? So it's just not practical to do that, right? So instead, we have a representative number, the mole, okay? And the mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, okay? We call that Avogadro's number. And like I said, it's just like a dozen. A dozen is always 12. A mole is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So the fixed number though, looks like this. 602 with 21 zeros behind it. We don't wanna do that. That's why we do it this way. I'll show you how to put that in your calculator. All right, but yeah, we, we don't wanna use the fixed number because it's huge because atoms are small, all right? Now, like I said, this represents the number of particles. So if I'm looking at an element like sodium, those particles are atoms. If I'm looking at a compound like water, those particles are molecules, all right? So it's whatever is the smallest unit 
of whatever it is you're looking at. So if you're looking at a compound, the smallest unit is a molecule. If you're looking at an atom, or sorry, an element, the smallest unit is an atom, unless it's a molecular element like oxygen or nitrogen, okay, then their smallest unit would be the pair of atoms, the molecule made up of two, okay? It's still always going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23, okay? It'll either be atoms or molecules, depending on what you're dealing with. Everybody follow me so far? Okay. Okay, so the way that this was arrived at, essentially, was um, the Avogadro wanted to come up with this representative number. So he said, I'm going to pick this representative number using essentially the simplest material that we know of, hydrogen. Okay? He said, I'm going to figure out how many atoms are in one gram of hydrogen. Okay? So a nice small kind of round number, right? which is why if you look at hydrogen, okay, it's molar mass. Okay, so the mass of one mole of it is 1.00794. Okay, like it's close to a gram, right? I mean, given Avogadro's equipment, because this is back a very long time ago, okay, he was pretty accurate. So what he did is at his time, they had a pretty good idea of the mass of a proton. They had a pretty good idea of the mass of an electron. And that's all a hydrogen atom is made up of. Okay, so he was able to figure out roughly how many atoms of hydrogen would be in one gram. That's the number. Okay, that's the number he found, and then he said, okay, I'm going to apply that to everything. So he went on to figure out what 6.02, what the mass, sorry, of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of everything else on the periodic table would be. That's where we get these numbers from. Okay, the atomic mass of everything on the periodic table is the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of that element. Okay. That's where those numbers come from. And that's why, in general, they get bigger as the atomic number gets bigger, because the, the atoms themselves have more and more particles in them, more protons, more neutrons, more electrons. Does that make sense? All righty. So the mass of one mole of a substance is known as that substance's molar mass, or if we're talking about atoms, atomic mass. Okay, We generally just say molar mass for everything. Okay. So for elements, we read that directly off the periodic table. So hydrogen on your guys' periodic table is rounded to 1.01. Okay. For compounds, we calculate the molar mass by adding up the molar masses of all the atoms involved. Okay. So for example, if I have water, water has two hydrogens and one oxygen in it. So if I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water, I can calculate what the mass of that would be by adding together the parts, okay? So there's two hydrogens in this compound and hydrogen is 1.01 .01 grams per mole, right? But there are two of them. So I would take that 2.02 .02 and I would add it to the mass of one mole of oxygen, which is on your periodic table, 16. Which means if I have one mole, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water, it would have a mass of just over 18 grams. Okay? And for water, because it has a density of one, that's 18 milliliters of water, about enough to fill up the cap of a water bottle. Okay? Not a lot. Right? So again, to give you some perspective on just how small atoms are, okay, the amount of water in a, the cap of a bottle okay, would contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water. Okay? That is an unfathomably large number. Okay? So atoms are unfathomably small. Okay, so does everyone kind of follow what I did with this? Okay, let's try another one just for argument's sake here. Let's try... Um, That's a tricky one, okay? I wanna calculate the molar mass of calcium nitrate, okay? So how many calciums are in calcium nitrate? One, okay. Molar mass of calcium, 40.03. Okay, or eight, it's 40.08, 40.08. Okay, uh, plus, how many nitrogens are in here? 
2. All right, so 14.01, that's nitrogen, times 2. And how many oxygens are in here? 6. 16 times 6. Okay, so I look at how many of everything there is, and I multiply that by its atomic mass, and then I add them all up. Okay, not difficult math by any stretch. Okay, we just have to find them all, okay, from our periodic table. So at first that takes a little while, okay, but then you eventually learn them all and you just rattle them off like that. Okay, it'll come. So for this one here, then we would have a molar mass of. One sixty four point one grams. Grams per mole, actually, because we calculated the mass of a mole. Okay, so the units for molar mass are always going to be grams per mole. Okay, questions on how we did that? Okay. I want you to try those five. Calculate their molar mass using your periodic table. Okay, let's look at the first two here for right now. Let's make sure we're all on the right track. Okay, so our first one here is sodium chloride. Okay, we have uh, one sodium and one chlorine. So we got 22.99 plus 35.45. on. All right, so we're looking at 58.44 grams per mole. How important are our units? Very. If you don't put units on an answer in high school sciences, any of them, it's just wrong. Because I don't know whether it's moles, grams per mole, apples, oranges, old ladies and walkers. I don't know. Okay. Elephants, you know, that are raging. I don't know. Okay. It's, it, we got to just okay, have units on there. Otherwise, a number is just a number and it doesn't communicate what we want. Okay. So always make sure you've got units on your numbers. Okay. Uh, so next one here, we've got iron three bromide. Okay, so for iron 55.85. Mind like a steel trap. Okay, um, and then bromine 79.90 times three, because there are three of them. Okay, so 55.85 plus 79.9. Whoops, times three, sorry, 55.85 plus 79.9 times three. Okay, 295.55 grams per mole. All right. Okay, how many people have done number three? Okay, look at that one too. So we got diphosphorus pentaoxide. Okay, so phosphorus 30.06. 30.97. I always get that one in sulfur mixed up. 30.97 times two plus 16 times five. All right, so we're looking at 110.97 grams per mole. Okay, everybody all right with that one? And people have done number four. All right, I'm gonna give you a little bit more time. Get four and five done and we'll look at those. Okay, so that one, guys, because I forgot to multiply by 2, should be 141.94 grams per mole. Okay, let's look at number 4. Okay, they get crazy when you got polyatomic ions and brackets and all that stuff because then you got to keep track of every single little thing. All right, so in this particular compound here, which is ammonium sulfate, I have how many nitrogens? 2. All right, so I've got 14.01 times 2. All right, plus how many hydrogens? 8. That one I can do in my head. Okay. I'm just and then um, how many sulfur do I have? Just one, so that's 30.06. And I have how many oxygens? Four. No, nope, that's not right. Okay, uh, so we put that all together. So we got 14.01 times 2 plus 8.08 .08 plus 30.06 plus 
plus 16 times 4. Sulfur's 32.06. Okay, so we'll just add 2 to that. No, now we're right. 132.16. What? 17? Sorry, I didn't round. I didn't look. Is, is it 07 on yours? Oh, so it's different on yours. Oh, they updated that again then. Okay. Um, yeah, so it should be 17 then for you guys. Okay. I didn't realize they had changed that number on there. Roll. Okay. All right. Uh, how many people have done five? Okay, let's look at five. So we got scandium carbonate here. Okay, so I can't remember what scandium is. That's not one we ever use. Uh, 44.96 times two plus how many carbon? Three. So 12.01 times three plus six oxygens. Nine oxygens, not six, nine oxygens. Okay, so 44.96. Times two plus twelve point zero one times three plus sixteen times nine. All right, one eighty nine point nine five. Nope, I missed a number here. Forty four point nine six. I only had four point nine six there. Okay, times two plus twelve point zero one times three, and I missed another one. Boy, this thing's not working today. Times three. Uh, plus 16 times 9. 269.95, sound better? Nine five grams per mole. Okay, so that's kind of the first skill that you have to have in order to do mole equation calculations is you have to be able to calculate molar mass. Right, because it's part of that equation, and it's a number you're going to need whenever you solve a mole equation problem. All right. Now, if we're looking at reactions, and this is where you're headed, okay? So, like, if you take Chem 20, one of the first things you're going to learn is what we call reaction stoichiometry, okay? And it's where you use a mole equation that calculates the number of moles or grams of something on one side of the equation, and then is used to calculate the number that would be produced on the other side. Okay, so I mean, in a reaction like this, it's fairly easy because we know mass is conserved, and that's of course how stoichiometry works. Okay, but if I had, let's say, three products over here, I know they would add up to what the reactants were, but I might want to calculate how much of one of those things I was going to get. Okay, and reaction stoichiometry can allow me to do that. Okay, we used to have to do that in science 10, but we don't anymore. Okay, it's not actually all that hard. Okay, but we that's where you're headed. It's like the first day of Chem 20. Okay, will be using the mole equation, which we haven't even gone over yet, to calculate you know, molar or gram amounts of uh, things on both sides of the equation. Okay, so when we look at a reaction like this, when we balance it, okay, we put in these coefficients okay, in order to make it work. So that could mean that I have one molecule of nitrogen reacting with three molecules of hydrogen to produce two molecules of nitrogen trihydride or ammonia. Okay. Or it could mean I have one mole of nitrogen, three moles of hydrogen, and I produce two moles of nitrogen trihydride. Okay, the ratio the ratio is the same. Okay, but those coefficients can mean different things. Everybody, all right with that? Okay. All right. So if we're talking about particles, okay, if I have, uh, I could have just one molecule or I could have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of this reacting with uh, three molecules or it could be three moles of this stuff, which would be a really big number, okay, and so on and so on. So if we're looking at that, okay, we would have Avogadro's number, okay, plugged in here for that as well. Okay, that's Avogadro. I don't know if just because he came up with the idea of a mole, but I think he looks like a mole. Oh, I don't know. He didn't have a green spot on his head. I don't know why. I don't know if it's like the big eyes or, or what. 
in the forehead. Yeah. yeah. And then the cut of this suit, I mean, it's just terrible. The cut of this suit makes him look like he has no shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Picasso painted it. Uh, his people always look kind of weird in my mind. Uh, I don't know. Okay, uh, so we've talked about this already, all the ratios here. Okay, here's the most important thing we need to know. Okay, is that the coefficients of a balanced equation tell us the relative number of moles of reactants and products in the reaction. Okay, that's what we're generally going to say that they represent. Okay, is that the coefficients represent the relative number or the ratio of moles okay, of one thing of an, to another within a chemical reaction. All right, now the mole equation. So you're gonna encounter Mole equation problems. I can only ask mole equation problems four ways. Okay, I can ask you to calculate the number of moles or the mass or the number of particles okay, or the mass of a certain number of particles. That's really all I can ask you is four different kinds of problems. I'm gonna go over all four kinds each day for the rest of the unit. So you will have nothing to surprise you on the unit exam because you'll have seen me solve all four ways I could ask this. Well, that'll be like five times before the unit exam. Okay, everybody with me there? All right, so first though, we have to look at algebra because probably somewhere along the way, somebody said, oh, just use a triangle and you don't have to do any math. That's dumb, okay? Triangles don't work. Well, I shouldn't say that, they work just fine if this is the kind of equation you're dealing with. We're going to deal with far more complex equations than that in science. Okay, find me a triangle for this formula. Well, maybe like a trapezoid, or I don't know. But there's no shape that's going to work for that formula. That you're not going to use that in this in this course, but you would in physics 20. Okay, here's one that you would use here. You're going to use that in the physics unit, but it doesn't fit in the triangle. The triangle doesn't take into account subtraction and addition operations. It only works for a three variable formula or a formula where everything is multiplied. You got a subtraction operation in here. It doesn't work now. Okay. It's a crutch and it's been hobbling you since you were taught it. I'm kicking that crutch out from under you and teaching you to walk. Okay. Because you have to learn. You can't survive on stupid, stupid triangles. I just hate it because people come in here and they're, I can't do math. Yes, you can. Okay. People are inherently good at math. They've been told they're not. That's the problem. Okay. Your guys' this whole generation was told you're not good at math. Okay. It's crippled you guys. It's terrible. Okay. We as teachers, when they brought in that new math curriculum, were like, oh my God, what are you doing? You're telling kids they're not good at math. And they kept that curriculum until finally parents got angry and went, this is dumb. And we were like, we tried to tell you that. So anyway, we're going to teach you how to do math. Okay. Algebra is easy. Okay. There's only three rules you have to remember to do algebra correctly. And you only really need two of them for this formula. Okay. So the two rules that you need are, if I want to move something, I do the opposite. Okay, so if I want to move something, I do the opposite of what's being done. So let's say I wanted to move big M here, the blue M, over to this side. What would I do? I would multiply, because right now I'm dividing by big M. So I would multiply. Now, here's the second rule. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do the other. That's all you got to remember. Okay, you can manipulate anything. Okay, if you can remember those two rules plus the one other one, which is really easy as well. Okay, but you don't need it for this equation, so we'll leave it for right now. All right, so if I want to manipulate this equation to solve for, for black M, we just said I would multiply both sides by big M, right? Okay, so that would effectively do this. Yes, it would. Okay, it would effectively do that, because here's what I'm going to do. If I multiply both sides by M, okay, 
I have an M on the top and an M on the bottom. What's M divided by M? One. one. Okay. And if I'm multiplying anything by one, it's just itself. So it cancels off. Okay. And then what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I multiply that side by M. So now I multiply this side by M. Done. Okay. That wasn't very hard, was it? All right. Now, what if... Okay, and guys, really, that's the only manipulation of this formula that you're going to have to do. Will you ever have to solve for big M using this equation? No, because you can always get big M from the periodic table. Okay, you solve for big M by adding up the molar masses of things on the periodic table. Okay, so you don't need a triangle for this formula. Triangles are dumb. I've only said that about six, seven times now, but they are, okay? So here's what I do want you to write down. Three rules of algebra. Okay, so what is done to one side of the equation must be done to the other. Okay, and the third rule of algebra okay, is um, move what's not attached to what you're looking for first. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Okay, so let's say I have this equation here. Okay, if you're taking math this semester, you'll learn y equals mx plus b. It's the equation for a linear graph. Okay, um, so let's say I want to solve for m. Okay, I want to solve for m. My three rules are: I want to move something, do the opposite, do it to both sides, move what's not attached first. I'm looking for m. What's not attached to m right now? B. So I'm going to move B first, okay? I'm adding B, so what should I do? Subtract B. All right, so that means my next step will look like this. Y minus B, okay, equals M times X, because I'm subtracting B from both sides, right? Effectively doing that. B minus B is zero, okay? Y minus B is Y minus B. All right, so now I've got Y minus B equals M times X. I want to get M by itself. What do I do with X? Divide both sides by it. And I'm done. Okay, if I can follow those three rules, they will not steer me wrong. Okay, I got through university physics with those three rules. Okay, university physics, with those three rules. Not calculus, but physics, okay, with those three rules. Okay, all you have to remember is that you gotta move something by doing the opposite, do it to both sides, move what's not attached first. Okay. If you do those things, you can manipulate any equation you want without a stupid triangle. Okay. All right. Let's have a look at this a different way. What if I want to solve for B? You're right. Say it again. Right, y minus m times x. Okay, think order of operations here. If I was solving for y, I would multiply these two numbers and then add it to b, right? Okay, so can I just subtract those two numbers at the same time? Okay, I would be multiplying them together before I did anything else anyway. Okay, so y minus 
m times x equals b. Okay, you can you can manipulate any equation you want following those rules. Okay, and you've got a really easy one. N equals little m over big M is really really easy to manipulate. Okay. All righty. Write this down. First example of using the mole equation. Okay, the simplest mole equation problem will simply ask you to calculate the number of moles. That's n. Okay, the equation's already set up for that, so you don't even have to manipulate it. You're just plugging in numbers. Okay, now I'm going to outline for you here uh, where you would get marks, because I, I give marks for all the steps, for all the work okay, that goes into a question. Uh, and the reason for that is I want you to show your work, okay, because it's really easy to make a mistake entering numbers into your calculator. It happened to me twice while we were doing mole, uh, molar mass calculations. Okay, It's really easy to make a simple mistake like that. And if all you show is your final answer, all you're going to get is zero because you've shown nothing else all i know is you wrote down a number that's wrong okay but if you show me hey i knew what to do i did this step and then i did this step but i just can't enter numbers into my calculator very well well you only lose one mark then okay that's better than losing them all all right so it's always really important to show your work okay so the first mark you would get would be for writing down your givens that is what the quest the numbers the question gave you Right, so it's asking me how many moles. So it's asking me to find n. And it's telling me that the stuff I'm dealing with is calcium chloride. What can I use that to find? Molar mass, right? I can use that to find molar mass. That's big M. All right, so big M is going to be uh, 40.08 okay, plus uh, 35. 0.45 times 2, uh, which is 110.98. Is that right? Grams per mole? Okay. And it tells me there's 90 grams of this stuff. So that's going to be which part of the mole equation? Little m, right. Okay. So those are my givens. So you would get a mark writing down your givens okay and your givens require one calculation as well okay then you would get a mark for selecting the correct formula sometimes okay um, if you had to manipulate it you'd get another mark for that okay for performing the algebra in this case i don't have to manipulate so i'm just going to plug in the numbers all right so that's going to mean 90 grams divided by 110.98 grams per mole Okay. And usually I give a mark for plugging in the numbers correctly. Okay. Now, do I have less than a mole here? Yes, Okay, because one mole is 110.98, and I only have 90 grams. So I'm going to get a decimal here, and that's fine. So 90 divided by 110.98. All right, is 0.81, um, we'll just say 0.81, two decimal places will be good. Okay, 0.81 what? Moles, okay? This is in grams per mole on the bottom, and I have grams on the top, so the grams cancel and I'm left with moles. And we abbreviate that mole, because we're way too busy to write the whole word. You laugh. We have an abbreviation for at. Yeah, it's true. Okay, we're that busy. Okay, we can't write the whole word. All right, does everyone follow what I did there? So this would be a three or four mark problem, depending on how generous I was feeling that day. Okay, when I decided um, how many marks it would be out of. Probably it's a three mark problem. Okay. All right, so that's the first and easiest way I can ask you a mole equation problem. This is the second way. So write this one down, okay? And then I'm going to walk through it. All 
Okay, so in this one, they're asking me to find the mass, which means I'm looking for which part of little m, right? I'm looking for little m, okay? That's my unknown. I know I have 4.5 moles, so that's n, okay, of magnesium bromide. So that'll help me calculate big M. Now, this is the way I would give you this question. I would give you the, the name. I wouldn't give you the formula, okay? Because then I want to make sure that you can do this and do your swap and drop correctly and get the right formula. Because if you don't do that correctly, are you pretty screwed? Yeah, because you're going to start off with the wrong number for all of your calculations, right? So it's important to be able to do this part correctly. All right, so we got 24.31 plus 35.45 times 2. Is that right? Okay. All right, so we're looking at 95.21 grams per mole. Okay, so here's my formula. So you get a mark for that. N equals little m over big M. And I need to manipulate this in order to solve for little m. So what do I have to do with big M? Right, I, I need to what? Times it, right. So I'm going to multiply both sides by big M. Hey, big M comes over here. You get a mark for that manipulation. Sorry, I put chlorine in there. You're absolutely right. I put chlorine's mass in there. Good catch, Easton. Okay, uh, 79.9 times 2. Hundred and eighty four point one one. Sound better? All right. So now I've manipulated my equation. I got a mark for that. Okay, now I'm going to plug in my numbers and solve. So little m is going to be um, 4.5 moles times uh, 184.11 grams per mole. And you don't have to put the units in this calculation. Okay, so you get a mark for plugging in your numbers there. All right, so we're looking at 828.50 grams. Okay, so that would be a four mark question. Okay, is there any really, really difficult math here? No. Okay, now the next two questions, the next two types of questions will involve another step. That step is going to involve Avogadro's number. Okay, so Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and it tells us how many particles are in a mole. Okay, so these next questions are going to involve either calculating the number of particles instead of moles, okay, or being given the number of particles instead of the number of moles like this question gave us. Okay, so it involves another step where we have to take the number of particles use Avogadro's number and get the number of moles or have the number of moles and multiply by Avogadro's number to get the number of particles. Okay, So they'll involve this extra step okay, for these next two. All right, so write this one down. I'll give you a minute and then we'll go over how it... All right, so this question is asking for the number of molecules. Okay, What it's given me are mass, 600 grams, and the material, silver nitrate. All right, so right away, I'm just going to calculate the molar mass of this stuff. So we got 107.87, is that right? Yeah. Plus 14.01 plus 48. That's three oxygens. Okay, so 169.88 grams per mole. Okay, so right now I have little m and I have big M. What can I calculate with those two things? All right, I can calculate n, the number of moles. So even if I was completely lost, which you probably are at this point because I haven't touched this yet, okay, I should calculate what I can. 
right? So I'm going to calculate the number of moles right now and then see where I go from there. Okay, so we got one mark for Givens. N equals little m over big M. So that's going to be uh, 600 grams. Okay, divided by 169.88 grams per mole. Okay, so we got 3.532, and we'll keep all the decimals, but I'm only going to write 3.53 here for now. Okay, 3.53 moles. All right, the question wants to know how many molecules there are. I've calculated how many moles there are. Do I know how many molecules are in one mole? Yes. So if I know how many are in one mole, how do I calculate how many are in 3.53 moles? Exactly. I multiply by the number in one mole. Okay. Think about it this way. I have three dozen donuts. How many donuts do I have? 36. Good. No one said three dozen because I had a smart aleck one time who did, told me that. Okay. But I have 36 donuts. How did you do that? You went three times 12, right? You knew how many were in a dozen, and you knew I had three dozen. So naturally, you multiplied. It works exactly the same here, okay? We should naturally just go, oh, well, I'm going to multiply by Avogadro's number because that's how many are in one mole. I have 3.53 moles. So I have 3.53 times that many. Okay, everybody follow me there. Okay, so that is our next step then. So we got one mark for Givens. We would have one mark for this operation here, okay? And then we would have another mark for this operation. The number of molecules equals N times Avogadro's number. Now, this gets tricky because you got to enter this number into your calculator without pressing 0 21 times because that's really slow and cumbersome and you'll probably miscount somewhere. Okay, so we are going to have 3.53, okay, times Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So on your calculator, regardless of the kind you have, okay, you will either have an EE button, two capital E's, or you will have an EXP button, okay? That is what you will use to get that 23 onto the 10. All right, so if you have a TI-83 like this one, all right, I'm going to take my number of moles here, and then I'm going to put a bracket. Whenever you put something in scientific notation like this, you need to enclose it in brackets. Otherwise, your calculator does funky things with the exponent. Okay, so I'm going to go bracket, and then I'm going to go 6 decimal 0, 2. On a TI-83, you then hit the second function button to get the little arrow, and then you're going to hit the comma because above the comma are two capital E's, okay? That means times 10 to the power of, and then we write in the 23. So that little E there stands for times 10, and then we're writing in the power of 23 here, 23, all right? So second function, comma, will give you that E, put in the exponent after, close off the brackets. Okay. If you have a different kind of calculator, okay, then you'll go 6.02 EXP 23 and then close off the brackets. Okay. Just depends on what kind of calculator you have. All right. So I'll come around here in a few minutes and kind of uh, help you out with that. Uh, I did notice, guys, that a bunch of you are using your phone for a calculator, which is fine in class. But on your unit exam, that blue bin over there on the table gets filled up with phones because you can't have your phone or Apple Watch or any other type of communicating device on you during a test. So you do need a calculator, okay? A real one, not the one in your phone, right? Doesn't have to be a TI-83, okay? A simple, you know, like Wally World scientific calculator for like $10 will work, okay? I think you can even get them cheaper than that, but it's gotta be scientific. That way you can do these exponents. That's all you need, okay? So you don't need a $200 calculator. Okay, so once I've done this, that will give me my number of molecules of silver nitrate. And it's 2.13 times 10 to the 24, right? So that's all I would write down. 2.14 times 10, so 2.13, 2.13 times 10 to the 24 molecules. Okay, again, units are important.
Okay, questions on how we did that one? So, sorry, that this would be a mark here, and then you get a mark there. So this would be between four and five marks, probably four. Okay, anyone need that one anymore? Write this one down, and I'm gonna walk you through it. It's the opposite of what we just did. So instead of being given the mass, now we're being given the number of molecules, and we're being asked to find out what's their mass. Okay, so we'll go backwards. Alrighty, so for this one, okay, we have, we're given, we're sorry, we're asked to find the mass. We're told the number of molecules this time. Okay, and that's 1.54 times 10 to the 25 molecules of diphosphorus tetraiodide. Okay, since it's a molecular compound, I don't reduce it. I, it's, mo it's molecular, so I keep it this way. All right, so for phosphorus, we got, okay, 30.97, and iodine's 126.9. Okay, so there's calculating our molar mass, two phosphorus, four iodines. So 30.97 times 2 plus 126.9 times 4. All right, it's 569.54 grams per mole. Okay, so one mark for our givens. If I want to find little m, I need what? N, okay, and I don't have it but I can find it because I know how many molecules there are and I know how many molecules there are in one mole. Okay, if I have 48 donuts, how many dozen is that? Four. Four. How did you do that? You divide it by 12 because you know there's 12 in a dozen. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna take the number of molecules that I have and divide by how many are in one mole and that'll leave me with how many moles. Everyone follow my logic there? Okay, so we've got then that N will equal 1.45 times 10 to the 25, well, not 24, 25, divided by Avogadro's number. Okay, effectively what we're doing is number of molecules divided by molecules per mole. Okay, and when we do that, the molecules cancels and we're left with Moles, okay? So when I punch this into my calculator, it does get a little crazy. I gotta bracket everything. So bracket 1.54 E25, okay? Divided by, in brackets, 6.02 E23. All right, so I have 25.58 moles of this stuff, which is quite a bit. Thank you. Okay, so I've got 25.58 moles. Now I know N and I already calculated big M. So now I can do this. I can manipulate for little m because now I have these two numbers. All right, so I'm gonna bring big M over here. Okay, that's gonna solve for little m. That'll be uh, five, sorry, 25.58 times the 569.54. All right, is that a lot? Yeah, it's like 14 and a half kilograms of this stuff. But I mean, that's how much I had, okay? There were a lot of molecules there. So they're going to have a lot of mass because they're also a big molecule. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll go 14,569.63. And that's grams. Okay. So this is probably a five mark question. Here's the marks. One for your givens. Okay. One for calculating the number of moles. 
Okay, one for identifying the mole equation, manipulating the mole equation, uh, and plugging in numbers, that's four, five. One for the answer. Okay, that question has more steps than any other mole calculation you get. Those are the only four ways that I can ask you a mole equation question. Okay, I'm either gonna ask for moles, I'm gonna ask for mass, or I'm gonna ask for those same two things, but giving you the number of molecules or asking for the number of molecules. Okay. But it's always those same four questions. There's no other ways to ask them. All right. So like I say, tomorrow I'm going to go over another four. Okay. So tomorrow you will not have a quiz. Okay. Tomorrow you don't have a quiz because we have mass tomorrow. So this one's in your um, uh, electronic workbook, but okay, we'll just look at it on here for right now. Okay. How many atoms are present in one mole of gold? How many atoms are in one mole? 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So does it matter what element I put at the end of that question? It does not. Okay. It's always going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Okay. Now, I have two and a half moles of helium atoms. How do I calculate how many atoms that is? Oh, easier than that. Okay. I don't have mass. I just know the number of moles. I'm looking for the number of atoms. How many atoms in a mole? Okay. How many at how many moles do I have? 2.5. What do we do with those two numbers? Multiply them. Finding the pattern here? Same thing on the next question. Okay. This, 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 this. Doesn't matter. Okay. All it's asking is how many are in 2.5 moles? How many are in 10 moles? How many are in 0.628 moles? It doesn't matter what the material is. Okay? It's just asking you how many molecules are in this many moles. All right. The only time the substance matters is if you have to calculate mass or something like that. Okay. Okay. Where the molar mass comes in. In this case, it didn't matter. All right. Um, so if you're looking at number two, okay, that's going to be a mole equation question. Okay, that's not number two is not going to use Avogadro's number. It's asking you, here's the mass, here's the material, calculate n. Okay, everybody with me there? Okay, give number two a try right now. Okay, simple mole calculations. They're telling you the materials. Okay, do do the mole calculations. I will post the key to these with today's stuff. Okay, so that you can try them. All right, let's just quickly look at 2a here just to make sure we're all kind of on the same track here. So on 2a, I'm told little m is 28 grams and I'm told that big M is for sodium, which is 22.99 grams per mole, right? All I have to do is plug in to the mole equation. I don't have to manipulate because it's already set up to solve for moles. Okay, so I just plug in here um, 28 grams divided by 22.99, all right, and I'm going to get like one point something, okay, so 28 divided by 22.99, now we're getting 1.22 moles, okay, so the trick here, guys, is just to, okay, know what you have, okay, and that's why I give a mark for writing down the givens, okay, writing them down and then figuring out what formula do I, or what, do, can I use this formula the way it is, do I have to move something, okay, do I have to use Avogadro's number, right, that kind of stuff, all right, and obviously in number two, you don't need to use Avogadro's number for any of those, they're all the same calculation, all right, okay, I think we'll leave it there, okay, we've gone through a lot of stuff today.